appear to be nearing the end of a fiat money cycle. Inflation is heating up big time and social chaos is rearing its ugly head. It seems that the end of the eviction moratorium will force millions of people into the streets. The operations of the state make less and less sense to the common people. The opinions and desires of the common people seem more and more threatening to the elites. Something has to give, and that something is usually the currency at this point in the cycle. First the currency goes, and then the political system goes. When the great value inversion comes, the elites lose traction because they no longer understand the system. Free market value is now being replaced with authoritarian fiat value. The elites are assigning value. They are not just assigning the value of goods and services. They are assigning the value of people. A few billionaires are, quote, worth more than millions of ordinary people. Government bureaucrats are paid substantially more than private sector workers. Washington, D.C. is the wealthiest district in the United States. The establishment is trying to sell a fiat value and buy real value. The bankers can print money, but they can't print value. If they want value, they have to buy it or steal it. Their problem is that they have so muddied the economic waters that nobody knows what real value is. Technology is changing rapidly. Perhaps some change in technology, such as high-tech gathering, will displace farming as we know it today. Perhaps Gates will lose a substantial portion of his fortune on his purchase of massive amounts of farmland. The white and black swans are flying. Anything can and will happen. Only the people can figure this out. And the people are being muzzled and hobbled so they can't work effectively. This will all end when economic mother nature takes its course. This crisis cannot be solved without returning power to the people. The crisis will continue to get worse as long as authoritarians keep up their insane push for total control. The earth is currently being ruled by men and women with delusions of grandeur who are backed by men with guns. The current crisis will end when these tyrants either step aside or are swept away by the tides of history. It is in the best interests of the tyrants to step aside, but they usually don't recognize that. Many will blame the bankers for the crisis, and indeed, they have been very foolish. 
financing a war is nuts. And financing both sides of a war is double nuts. But a solution to our problem needs to focus on the indispensable element in this mess, men with guns. None of this can continue without the support of the cops. I'm not suggesting violence, but I am suggesting that our persuasive efforts should focus on cops. Without the active support of cops, tyranny cannot stand. That's why they call it a police state. Bankers have been dealing with the business cycle problem for thousands of years. And I would assume they have narratives as to what to do. I suspect that many bankers think this time is different and they will be able to establish an authoritarian utopia that will last for thousands of years. People with this opinion are delusional and they are not paying attention to the math. Authoritarianism does not work because the computational load required for an authoritarian system to function smoothly is way beyond the capacity of any conceivable authoritarian information processing system. Only the common people have the collective information processing capability and logistics capability needed to create a smoothly functioning society. And they can only create a smoothly functioning society if they have freedom. This time is not different, and no conceivable society will ever be able to evade the laws of information processing. The laws of information processing are as universal as the law of gravity. Freedom works, and it will always work. Slavery sucks, and it will always suck. <laughs>